commentary of our production, The Brook, and today we're focusing on titles. Okay, so I've got After Effects CS6 here, so I'm going to go ahead and import some footage. So here we are using the gate crane scene, which is quite a complex shot because of the way that the camera pans across while moving downwards from a high to a low angle. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and drag this into After Effects imported and we're going to create a new composition and we will call this um, title ray trace due to the fact that we are using ray traced 3d which allows us to extrude and bevel the titles so we are going for 25 fps full hd and background color black okay new composition yeah okay and open that composition Okay, so we're going to get our footage and drag it down here. That track's okay. Right, so we want to start at about there. So we'll drag you backwards. Let's see from about there up to about there, I'd say. So let's cut that down. And now I'm going to select this, go up to animation and click track camera Snip back to the composition panel there there we go and select you and it is now analyzing initializing I believe so this will take a few minutes and what it is doing it is building up a 3D camera inside the software as so that when you create some 3D text inside it will track with the software well with the so it will track with the footage giving you a very realistic title which looks like it's inside the frame so this is going to take a few minutes to track so I will just stop now and pick up in a second okay and it's just finished tracking um, and even though it's not showing up normally what it will do now is show green and red green red and blue and other colors which show track points um, and for some reason today it is not showing them which is very odd we click over to 2d source you can see these track points here so now if I go over to 3d they should normally be there but they aren't for some reason today which so I'm not quite sure what's going on there but never mind we can carry on regardless so let me just fit you to screen so what we're going to do now is find a good point on which to track the titles to so you can see here that just by my mouse there is a red circle and a triangle behind it the red circle is telling us the orientation of the shape so, so aka what direction the text will point to when we create this and the triangle is showing the vertexes, even though they're not showing up today, of which that will be attached to. So that one I found there seems to actually be a very good one. Even this one might even be even better, actually. So I'm going to right-click here, create text and camera. So now what I've done is, when it shows up... Sorry, it's been a bit slow because I'm screen capturing at the same time. Um, when it finally does it... Do, 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 come on. I think what I'm going to actually have to do is when it'll let me change my resolution half just because it's taking a long time. There we go. So you can see that it's created the text. So let's use the command T hotkey to activate text. And just for now, actually, I'm going to switch to classic 3D just for speed of actually typing out the text. So we are going to put in here director of photography, enter Shona. Robinson. Okay, so over in here, you can see that our font is Optico, and what we want to do is because Shona's name should be larger, as she's the most important information, we're going to select just her name and up the size of her text. Not so that it's longer, but just so that it's the more prominent of the two, as it's easy to read. So now we're going to it's a 3D layer, which is shown by this box here, um, which has now just gotten really big, so I shall actually just undo what I did. Um, so now we're going to press S, Command P, Command R, sorry, shift, P, Shift, R, S. Um, 
and here we've got our position, scale, orientation, etc. So as you can see, that this text here is slightly slanted, so it needs to follow these lines. So what we're going to do is, in the X rotation, slightly move it. Now as you can see, that's matching quite a bit better now. And you can see this red line here doesn't quite follow the angle of the grey fence. So we're going to, in the Y rotation, just ever so slightly push it backwards. That could even possibly do with being moved a bit in the Z axis. That's looking a bit better. Move it back in X a slight bit. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to switch. Actually, before I do this, I'm going to make it much larger for one. And then I'm going to press A to no, V to get to my grab tool and just move it up so it's above. That's actually given us a bit of a clearer view. In a second, um, sorry, final cut was distracting me there. Um, so we're going to ever so slightly go back to um, PSR again, and um, maybe not leave it Y. Maybe give it 0 0.5 in the Z rotation. No, back. I think it's X that's causing our problem here. Let's try an 18. Hmm. It's been very odd today. Um, it's normally a lot simpler than this. It's because maybe Matt, I've not chosen my point very well, which we're tracking to. It's simply so that it looks visually correct because there's nothing worse, in my opinion, than having something that's meant to look in the scene and not be, if you know what I mean. So that's positioned correctly now. It's not obtrusively big, but it's visible. Maybe give it not point seven on there, or is that the wrong way? Not point one point three. There we go. Just the red lines matching up along there. So now we're going to click over to our type of three D again, and go to ray traced. Okay. Now what that will do, as you can see, this yellow bar indicates that it's rendering, which because it ray trace is a very complex for the computer to make. So go into geometry options and um, click bevel, have a convex bevel. And then in our extrusion depth, we're going to, it ranges from about four to 10, depending on the angle. So we'll try four for now and then see what we come up with. Okay, so that's looking okay. Let's just go over and check. We seem, I think that's correct. Let's just render in full resolution for a moment, just so I can see how that is looking, as it's hard to tell with a half render. Half resolution render. Just takes a few minutes because the computer inside its GPU has a 3D object, and then for shading, it fires little rays, digital rays of light at the object to find out what it looks like. Okay, so let me just deselect that to get rid of the red box. That's looking quite decent. I, it could be moved back. We move back ever so slightly, so I'm going to go down. I'm going to move slightly, move the y axis back ever so slight amounts to about there, and maybe put the extrusion depth up to seven. Just like that, render. Okay, so that's looking quite good now. So just go back to the start, just simply so we can see how it looks like, because that's positioned correctly in that perspective, but for all we know, something might have gone seriously wrong in the tracking, causing it to not look correct somewhere else. So we'll just have a quick play about, looking backwards. Okay, so it's not in shot there, so we'll go forward a little bit. Surrendered. There we go. So yes, as we can see, that's correctly positioned in the frame. So we'll just nip just to the end just to see how it's looking there, and then that should be okay and good to go. Yep, so as you can see, that's correctly positioned and directed. So the advantage of having the camera tracked in is that what it does is, as the point moves and rotates in 3D space, because the object is tied to that point, so will the object, which is a really good advantage over CS 5.5, in which you would have had to manually track it in yourself, which is very time-consuming. So before this render now, we're going to hide the background footage and create a new layer 
which will be a solid and we're going to color it blue because if you use a green screen on this the white and green can sometimes get a bit too close with in final cut but a blue won't because it's a very very contrasting color to the white so we'll just create that blue solid um, and we're going to position it behind the 3D track camera let that render give me a moment So, as you can see, that is now blue screen. So now I will go ahead and add that to a render queue. And then from here, my settings are on QuickTime, um, format options. Set this to ProRes LT, best quality, OK. And render output, best, best, best. Yeah, and the reason we want it is best simply so they have the best resolution. Output to ray trace mov in the titles folder, save, and then I will go ahead and render, which will take about an hour because After Effects does a really good job of everything. So once this is done, I will either use this or another one to show you where now in Final Cut Pro. Okay. Um, our rendering After Effects has finished, um, and this was the output. So um, this is actually one I did earlier, just simply because when recording it was going to take over an hour to render, and I didn't want to wait that long. So this one, as you can see, is blue screened, and it is rotating in 3D space. So this is the exact same thing that would have happened in the, the version that I just made, except for this is one I did earlier. So, got our footage here, gatecrane.mov, um, and this actually, so what we need to do now is crop it down. So, we'll put it in about there at the moment, and we didn't go all the way, so we'll pop it about there. So, drag this down to here, and press yes, just does the text, we can see that's in there. Okay, so now, if I go into my text... And drag that into a new video layer over the top. Um, what I now need to do is click on it, go to effects, go to video filters, which I can't see behind my window, um, go to key, and you can either use blue and green screen or chroma key. I use chroma key just because I do. Um, so go and so press your eyedropper tool here, go to your video tab and press the blue. Now you can see in the video it's not done much, but it has, it's just that what needs to be done is the saturation and the luma needs to be turned off. And as you can see, that's going there. It's a bit grainy, um, I'm not sure quite what's going on with that, but um, I will fix that at a later date. This is just about showing how to line it up. So as you can see, that's not clearly in time with the title, and that's simply because we started a bit late. But if we remember here... This S was about here. So what that tells me that the title is a tad behind that. So if I move, let me, just get, let me link me sound again. It's delinked. There we go. Command L links links and unlinks sound and sound to a video clip. So that's actually moved the wrong way. So I will move the text that way. And you can see that's now moved the S too far. So this bit's really just about playing. So that's getting close now. Still jumping a little bit, maybe one more frame. You can see that's tracking a lot better, but there's still a slight problem with it. I'm a bit of a perfectionist, so I could spend a long time just going through until it's perfect. So I play that now, and um, it's probably a bit shaky because it's a screen record happening at the same time. But as you can see, if you watch this bit closely, that is staying pretty much exactly in the same spot in respect to the fence behind it. There is a bit of jittering, but I think that's mainly because of the fact I'm screen recording at the same time. When this is rendered out properly, um, it looks pretty good. So the finished shot of this, when 
so when you render this out you get this here so if I play this now you can see that is matched pretty much perfectly to there and then that was just an After Effects error so what I'm going to do now that I've shown you how to create the chroma key just delete that for now just to save render time and drag my finished one down here um, yeah. so then in here I would do as we did before in the previous video add the glow, sepia tones etc and you get something like this shop shown here um, which is the actual finished shot in that went into our piece um, for some, as you will have noticed, um, comp 1.8 is um, one shot with combined video and text. And I think that was because we actually found that on this particular shot, it was not tracking, it was not matching up properly when overlaid. So we actually went back into After Effects and exported both the video and the titles at the same time which had meant we had a little less control with the actual colour filters on the video. So for the rest of the shots, which I don't have with me at the moment, we did properly green screen and then applied colour filters to the background video as shown in the previous clip. So that is how we made our titles. Um, so thank you for watching. This I've been Jake and I've been your technical director for this video.